Okay, welcome back, and today we're going to make a racing game based on something like Micro Machines or any top-down race you might have played uh, using a bunch of different techniques, a bunch of different um, pathfinding algorithms to get the cars working. We're going to start off nice and simple, probably run this over a couple of videos, but hopefully if you follow it and listen to what I have to say, fingers crossed you can get something similar and you can add your own spit on it. So without further ado, let's get on with the game. So, first things first, what we're going to do first is the first sort of uh, iteration. The game's not going to look fantastic. It's going to look something like this on the right. So nothing amazing, so I get too excited of the first video. But um, fingers crossed, we can get through it quite quickly. So we're going to start off as normal. With, I've imported P, uh, P5 Play already. As you know, most of my game videos use P5 Play. And I'm just going to create a bunch of video, uh, videos. Nope, variables at the start. So the tile size is going to be 1. Uh, I'm going to set that to 10 and the rest is going to be for our group so I've got T for my tile map I've got one for border, one for my start line and then one for the player and I can go ahead and implement those quite quickly so I'm not going to type everything out um, I'm just going to paste these in because I've already got this game created I'm just going to explain the code as you can see in here so I've got a group here for border this is going to be our red area we're not going to have anything for the road, we're just going to drive on there. Player is going to be our sprite, which is blue, which you can see here. And then start is going to be like an invisible line that you can't see at the minute, but you'll see when we get the time map in. So if you just want to copy this up, um, I'd pause the video now, get it copied up, and then catch up with me in a second. So fingers crossed you've resumed it, and I'm going to paste in my tile map. So if you've seen any of my videos, I've used tile map before on the platform game, and a lot of games, and... Uh, I'll be doing a tower defense game soon, which also uses the time map as well. So I'm going to paste that in. Looks really complicated, but I will put this as a pinned comment so you can copy it in. And the other thing extra, so I've said T equals new tiles, and then I've added in where I'm starting from, which is zero zero, and then how big are these boxes going to be? So that's pretty much the beginning of our game done. Uh, we've got our start line here, X for the player start, and our border. Now you're probably wondering why the map looks the way it does. And it's just because in the final game I sat and made a map and this is how it links up with mine. So I'm just going to run that now and you see that's my map translated straight from this onto here which is good. So I'll work in. Now there's some random little extra edges they don't particularly matter. I just had them extra thick because my first iteration of the game used a different method of pathfinding which sometimes couldn't quite see an edge so I had to double them up some, at some places. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do Clear to clear the canvas. We're going to put the background on. I'm just going to have it black. And then I'm just going to do camera dot zoom to zoom into my car. So I'll run that. It should zoom right into the screen. And now I should say what my x and y positions are. So camera dot x equals player dot x. Camera dot y equals player dot y. Uh, and then camera dot on. I've got on there. You don't necessarily need this at the moment but you will need it as we go progress through so I'm just going to leave that in there but as we progress with the game it is going to get a lot more complicated and we're going to have to stop drawing at certain points so if I run that it should be nicely positioned on our player and then we need to add in some controls so I'm going to do controls there and make a function so function controls now again be a bit of pausing because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the easy part which is going to be my else statement which is going to be for my keyboard controls now what I haven't done so far on this channel is do anything with a controller so I'm going to explain that part, if this part's easy, we've done it loads of times uh, that's going to be our normal driving so what we're going to do is we're going to say if controls zero now what this does is this detects if you've got a controller plugged in so at the moment I don't have one plugged in um, I'm really hoping that I've got space yes I do I'll just unplug my USB because uh, I've got an Xbox controller with me so if I've got a controller and inside here I'm gonna say if uh, control dot pressing and I'm gonna say the right trigger so that's gonna be us driving so I'm just gonna say player dot speed equals two now this next part is a little bit dodgy. It will work, but it's a little bit dodgy to read and to understand. So it's a little bit of math, so we're gonna use the math library 
we're going to do some functions um, basically just to convert the left and right joystick to be a direction so I'm going to say um, let direction equals math dot a tan 2 um, and I'm going to do control dot left stick dot y and then control dot left stick dot x so that's going to uh, correct uh, correctly calculate my turning um, and that's that first part done then what we're going to do is work out um, when you're not pulling the trigger so I'm going to put in else like that was a bit, bit confusing with the curly brackets um, I'm going to say let direction equals exactly the same code as before so I can just put that in here like that but then I just need to rotate the player correctly because I want to be able to turn on the spot as well so I'm going to do player sorry but rotation equals and then direction times 180 to convert it to um, the rotating on its, on its axes and spell math correctly with a capital M there we go math dot pi like that and I'm just going to do player dot direction equals player dot rotation this is just to stop it like freaking out when you let go of the triggers and stuff it's still if you let go of everything it'll still default but if you are still say you're, you're not, not driving anymore you're not pressing the accelerator you can still turn around the corner if you're slowing down or something um, that's why I've done that so that's our basic driving so if I just run that fingers crossed it works first time um, so there you see I'm using the keyboard so it's not that smooth um, and nothing really changes I can just turn the spot like that now I'm just going to plug it in and fingers crossed nothing weird happens my um, controller now it won't work instantly you will have to refresh the um, the browser so if I just refresh this now I'm now pressing the trigger and then so I can turn the spot and then I'm near enough I'm spinning about a little bit so I think I'm somewhat, somewhat slightly wrong it's working really nicely when I let go but when I'm pressing the right trigger I'm bouncing from wall to wall so let's see what I've done wrong I'm sure there's something strange let's just double check my code so I've got um, if I've got a controller in which I do if I'm pressing the right trigger my speed and my directions calculated um, otherwise play dot direction play dot rotation direction math.py looks like it's about right can't see anything particularly wrong so let's investigate and see why it's been a little bit weird it turns out that I've just been a sausage and I've written it twice when I should have done so I think that should be about right let's have a little look um, so I don't need this else either because I want the direction to be always calculated you could argue that I shouldn't do this on the spot but then there we go you see I've got a little bit more control of my turn in because I'll just get to a bigger bit so I can loop around a little bit more because I'm using this controller now so it's a little bit better it always helps if you read your own code properly um, and obviously we can just run around our map and we can drive our little car the other thing they will sort of notice is that if you um, what we probably need to have is some sort of um, braking system just to make it a little bit uh, more realistic so we'll just get rid of that for now I'll just pop this pad because it'll keep driving otherwise this pad's a bit dodgy um, so we've got this working now so we've got our direction sorted but we need to now make it slow down so I think what we need to have is probably um, if by the way, we'll copy it actually I can copy this code here and we can say if I'm pressing the left trigger 
we're going to really increase our drag and friction to slow us down rather than increase the speed. Otherwise, if I'm not pressing it, then we'll just have it so we've got some drag and friction. So let's have a little go at that. Let's see if that does something. So then, and then now I've let go, I've stopped, and you probably can't tell, you don't know why I'm doing it, but if I just let go like this, I slow down, then I can break a little bit around the corners and stuff. So that's pretty much the first part of the game. We can drive around the map, we can brake, we can drive, we can use a controller, and we can also use a, a keyboard. But as you can see, I'm not using the keyboard right now, but then I can still use it if, a power, if your controller does get disconnected or whatever. So here is our movement function. If you want to pause the video, make sure yours is correct for that one. And then here's our camera. Here's our timer, which I'll put as a comment. And then here are my first starting different values. And that's it. So next thing we'll look at probably, which I think what's the uh, the best thing to um to have working is probably making the game look nice. And then we'll finish it off with a third video, which will be getting um the AI cars to draft against you and things like that. So fingers crossed that was useful for you, and I'll see you in the next video.